I want to I want to share for a few moments just a couple of thoughts. I want to reiterate a couple of thoughts from last week, and then and then we're going to uh, we're going to worship in our giving, and we'll end out with communion as we end out our time. Okay? Would you thank God again for Wilma? Thank you, Lord. For those who happen to be watching by way of the live stream, we believe in honoring those who serve. The Bible says give honor to whom honor is due. And it really is an honor for us. It is an honor for us to celebrate Wilma. You just don't know all the stories. And God has blessed us with an incredible team here and body of believers. And all of you are a part of that as well. Thank you, Lord. We've been talking about or last week I talked about unprecedented testing or unprecedented promotion in preparation for an unprecedented movement in unprecedented times. So in part, Wilma, all the, all the testing of these last few years has been about this season of promotion for you, this season of promotion for many, That word unprecedented, it, it has to do with never done or known before, having no earlier parallel or equivalent. Unprecedented, the synonyms for it are extraordinary, meaning the record, first time, unique, exceptional, unmatched. A glimpse into how do you prepare for the unprecedented, I think, is seen in Joshua 3. Let me read this to you again. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and he and all the sons of Israel set out from Shechem and came to the Jordan. And they lodged there before, before they crossed. At the end of three days, the officers went through the midst of the camp, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God with the Levitical priests carrying it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Just say with me, when God moves, you move. Come on, when God moves, that's when we move. It says this, however... There shall be between you and it a distance of about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it that you may know how, that you may know the way by which you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. Say unprecedented. Then Joshua said to the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. He will do wonders among you. When I read that, I see the instructions that God gives Joshua to give the people. On last week, I shared, I believe it was five things that are considerations for us 
in preparing for the unprecedented. I want to rehearse those again, and then I want to just add a context to just a couple of those in this time. The first thing I said is this, remember that God is eternal. God is eternal. He is omnipresent. He is omniscient. I don't know how much time you spend thinking about how big God is, how great he is. But if we take the time to meditate on his word, it will bring into perspective for us how large he is. And not just reading through what we call the New Testament, but reading through all of the scriptures and reading all of the accounts that speak to all that God has done. One of the things that I shared last week is how that for the people of God, one of the key things for them and for us is to remember, the second part, is to remember and rehearse what he's done. Remember and rehearse what he's done. Remember and rehearse what he's done through reading the word, but then in our own lives, being able to sit down and think through your life journey, my life journey, and see his hand all the way through it. It will stir your faith, your trust, and hope, but then resist the thought that it's all he can do. There is more. There's more. One of the things as we were ministering to Wilma, Jamal said, Pastor Jamal said, and he's inviting you now. I'm convinced, Janice, that we receive one invitation after another. Most of us, if not all of us, we will decide where we stop. And I want to tell you that it's not necessarily a bad thing. However, you have to know that the moment you stop, certain things will never come to you that God intends to bring to you when you accept and say yes to the invitation. That's why the opening chapter of my book, Same Faith, Same God, living in the realm of ridiculous faith is, it's by invitation only. But everyone is invited. And so I want to ask you in this season of the unprecedented, what is God inviting you into right now? And all of heaven is waiting for you to say yes. What is stirring in your heart that really is God stirring your heart? The Holy Spirit stirring your heart. And the moment you say yes, everything begins to shift and move. When you and I say yes to that invitation. For some, it's simply God wanting to walk more closely with you and you more closely with him. That you say yes. Sometimes our yes is the very thing that's needed to move us out of a cycle or a, a, a place we find ourselves in when we're, when we're no longer satisfied, but we don't know how to make the shift. All he's looking for is a yes. Remember and rehearse what he's done. What the children of Israel had to their benefit was a God who kept demonstrating how amazingly powerful he is over and over and over. And then we have the benefit of reading through the scriptures and seeing over and over and over how amazingly powerful he is down through the generations, all the way into what we call the New Testament, the birth of Christ, amazing. Amazing, unprecedented. Not before, not since, has a virgin given birth. Unprecedented. 
The challenge with some unprecedented things is that because it's never been seen before, it's hard to wrap your mind around it to even accept it. So what we choose to do is we choose to, in our finite minds, we choose to try to minimize it or somehow make it fit when it's really not supposed to fit at all. See, you and I, we can't make God fit. You can't make God fit. You, we can't make his ways fit. My ways are not your ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. The next thought is determine not to hold on to concepts, patterns, and habits if if necessary, that have worked in the past. Be willing to lay it all before the Lord in order to be prepared for the unprecedented. Just in your best season, being willing to still lay that down. Even though it's working, God may still require, let me have that. Give me that. Don't quickly discount a thought or an idea because you have never heard it or heard of it before. Because you've never seen it before. Holy Spirit may be speaking a revelation to you. We'd like to think that as spirit-filled believers that we really are walking in revelation, revelation knowledge. And I believe that in many ways we are. But here's the thing, if you're quick to discount a thought because it hasn't fit your life up to this point, it's a good chance that we're really going to miss God. You're going to miss God. As I was sitting in my office, I thought about this particular uh, piece in this book, and um, my office has been redone, so some of the things is in the other room, and so I, I was trying to find this book, and I so love the Holy Spirit because um, I didn't find it on my shelf. And he said, go look in the other room. And uh, my brother David, he is so accommodating. He, he's trying to help me find it. He don't even know what he's looking for. <laughs> Where's David at? <laughs> David. <laughs> but David is just, <laughs> Pastor, is it, he's looking on the shelf. I said, no, I know what it is. I just got to see if I can find it. And it's relevant for this point right here. Don't quickly discount a thought or idea because you have never heard it or heard of it before. Holy Spirit may be speaking a revelation to you. I declare this to you that, I submit this to you that when you give yourself to being prepared for the unprecedented, that's when you're going to hear things you've never heard before. That's when you're going to see things you've never seen before. But when that happens, don't be quick to discount it. So this, this is what came to mind, and, I, and again, I was able to locate it. So let me read this to you. Um, this particular book is a gentleman who uh, works in advertising and uh, marketing, and he has gathered these various quotes and thoughts uh, from all over the world and put them in this book. This is entitled, When an Idea's Time Has Come. When an idea's time has come. And it says this, just as Albert has his theory of relativity, I have my own, the theory of universal knowledge, which states there is a time for every idea. And when that time comes, the idea springs into the minds of several people simultaneously. 
Think about that. And then he says this. It is the first person to take action who gets all the applause. The rest just sit back and cry. He stole my idea. Though the world is overflowing with good ideas, people with the courage to act, excuse me, are rare. That's why it's important to take time, even with Wilma, to build her up and say, you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. You've been talking about it. You have this idea. You got to do it. Years ago, when we were still in our house and we were meeting uh, in, uh, we had just moved to the corner of Crescentville and 747. And a couple of our members had the idea that they needed to really step out with their giftings. And I'll never forget talking with one young lady and said, we need to help you launch. And I went to our board and I said, she needs to get to Nashville and we need to help her. And so I said, this is what we want to do to help you. We're going to pay your rent. And I won't say the amount of time, but we're going to pay your rent for X amount of time to get you there. To see if this is what you're supposed to do. That same year, around that same time, there was a gentleman in our church who was also part of our worship team. He felt he was supposed to go to Nashville. And as we came into that new year and those who were at Ayers at the time, you remember that year the theme was go for it. Go for it. How many of y'all remember that, Ayers folk? Go for it. That was before you guys had got there. And I remember the night that I said, and the theme for this year is go for it. And the brother jumped up. He said, I'm going for it. <laughs> that young lady was Leanne Palmore. Leanne has traveled the world for years singing with C.C. Winer. Traveled for years, sang with Andre Crouch, Israel Holt. The list goes on and on and on. The amazing things that she has accomplished and still accomplishing. The gentleman was Calvin Noel. Calvin has traveled for years with Michael W. Smith. He sung on numerous recordings. And not too long ago, he met Oprah Winfrey because he had done a skit about Oprah and she somehow heard it and contacted him. And if you go on YouTube and you look at the latest video that C.C. Winers has done because he has sang with C.C. as well, the latest video that she's done, I think it's called God is Good or the song, one of her latest songs. That video, Calvin's company produced. What is it that God is saying to you that's unprecedented, that seems far from you in this moment? You just need to go for it. He says, the idea when the time comes, the idea springs into the minds of several people simultaneously. 
It is the first person to take action who gets the applause. The rest sit back and cry, he stole my idea. Though the world is overflowing with good ideas, people with the courage to act are rare. Swan and Sawyer are brilliant inventors working on opposite sides of the Atlantic. Each of them has plans to produce electric light by running a current through a filament in a vacuum. But it is Thomas Edison who first announces the discovery and receives all the fame and fortune. It doesn't matter that both Swan and Sawyer are further advanced in their experiments or that it will be more than a year before Edison produces, publicly produces electric light. Edison has the courage to claim he can do it. Sawyer and Swan did not. Instances of universal knowledge are becoming increasingly commonplace due to the rapid growth, growth of population and influence of mass communication. I want you to know that this was written, when this was written and this was published, we were not in, even in the uh, world of social media the way we are now. Since with millions and millions of people receiving identical information and stimuli, should it come as a, as a surprise that many of us have the same ideas at the same time? Evidence of genius is becoming commonplace and talent seems to be running rampant in the world. I'll wager that you, yourself, have enough talent to be world famous for something. The important question, though, is this. Are you willing to take action or will your talent remain unrefined like gold that stays in the ground? Are we, in fact, created in the image of God? Are we? I'm asking a question. Are we? Yeah, shout yes. yes. The Bible says that we are created in the image and the likeness of God. He says, and if so, does that mean that each of us is a walking miniature of him who spoke worlds into existence and flung the stars from his fingertips? Did he, in fact, prepare you to do great things, then give you a choice? I, I, I'm waiting for another yes. I'm waiting for another yes. Is there a chance that your circumstances and experiences have uniquely and wonderfully prepared you for such a time as this? Do you have the courage to act? Do not quickly discount a thought or idea because you have never heard it or heard of it before. We are living in an unprecedented times, and God is speaking. God is speaking. My prayer is that God readies us for the unprecedented. That God readies us for the unprecedented. I'm asking God, help me to be ready for the unprecedented. I'm asking God to help me be prepared for the unprecedented. Help us to be prepared 
for the unprecedented. How do we prepare, prayer, prayerfully submit every plan, vision, and desire to the Lord? Expect Holy Spirit to give instruction, give direction, revelation, wisdom, and insight beyond what we can see and what we can know. And then we wait. Because I want you to know, heirs, they are coming. They are coming from the north, south, the east, the west. They're coming. But I need you to know that when they come, we need to be prepared for the unprecedented. They're not going to look like us. Not going to look like you. Their thoughts concerning things will be far from kingdom. But they will come. And when they come, we must believe, we must pray, and we must believe that by the power of God, by the moving of Holy Spirit, through signs, wonders, and miracles, through the priest's word, through instruction, that those who come who are searching, those who come that are lost will find God and in doing so, find themselves. Things are going to look different. They are going to be different. And we will need that amazing love in operation. We will need that agape love in operation. We will need that unrelenting, uncompromising love in operation. For in the days ahead, We will continually find ourselves stepping into the unprecedented. Never saw it before, never thought it before, but here it is, and he's allowing it. Are we ready? Are we ready? Now, I just want to say this to you. I appreciate everybody that said yes. You know what my answer is to the unprecedented? Am I ready? I don't know. But I want to be. How can you be prepared for that which you've never seen before? How can you be prepared for that which you've never had to address before? How can you be prepared for that which you've never heard before? I don't know, but I want to be ready. I don't know, but we need to be ready. I say yes by faith, but I still don't know. I don't know what I'm saying yes to. Because it's unprecedented. And everything in me wants to be ready. But this is what I know. It's God who will ready us. And oftentimes, he will ready us in the moment. In the moment. Pastor Arnez, you, you've dealt with things as a school principal that you never could have imagined. Would you agree? Unprecedented. And yet by God's grace, he continues to give you wisdom, revelation, grace, and courage in every instance. 
Some of you know what I'm talking about. You're in that same space. I'd like to say, yes, I'm ready. But I don't know. When Joshua spoke to the children of Israel and God spoke to Joshua and said, now you need to let them know whatever they thought about me up to this point, they need to park that because you're now coming into a place you've never been before. As a matter of fact, don't try to run up on me like you think you know where you're going. You need to stay a distance away because you're going to see some things that you've probably never seen before. Are we ready? Are we ready? By faith, I say yes. By faith, I say yes. Come on, say it. By faith, I say yes. I don't know, but I want to be. I, there's just something about right here, right this moment. I just, I, I just feel something quite sobering. Because I can say yes, but when I see something for the first time I've never seen before, I, 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 need, I need to be in the right place. Mentally, I need to be in the right place emotionally. I need to be in the right place in my frame of mind. I don't know, but I want to be. And by faith, I'll say yes. So many things hit our lives and, and we think we're ready, but when it happens, we're not as ready as we thought we were going to be. Edie and I were talking about that. She said, I knew that this, this moment would come, but when it comes, I'm not as ready as I thought I was. Because I'm dealing with something that's unprecedented. I've never had to walk through this before. Now, I've walked through similar things before. And the similar things is what makes me think, yes, I'm ready. But what happens when that which has been similar pales in comparison to something that, is, that, that has shown up now that I've never, ever seen before? I, I thought I was ready. And by God's grace, it's going to be okay. But I'm just trying to bring some gravity to this, y'all. I just sense it. I've read, I've read a whole lot in this book. I've seen a lot over the years that has helped me, that helps me to be as real about this as I can be. And that is when it comes to the unprecedented.
I don't know that I'm ready. I know that I want to be. And by faith, I say yes. To a God who sees all, who knows all, and sovereignly will prepare us and equip us. But when the unprecedented happens, when the unprecedented shows up, it will be his grace. It will be his grace. It will be his grace in operation. And our yielding to that grace that causes us to be ready.